what was supposed to be a night of celebration turned into disaster after four friends who were all drunk left the bar in the city without a designated driver. Designate a driver. Don't drink and drive. This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Wednesday, the 21st day of August in the year 2024. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting, and here's what we're tracking tonight. With some senior union officials claiming trickery, the president of the Ghana Teachers Union went ahead this morning and signed off on that three-year agreement with the government on behalf of the union and the teachers it represents. The GTU president said he had the support of the majority of the general council of the GTU, who he said agreed to accept the terms of the agreement. The agreement was signed by the GTU president, Mark Light, and permanent secretary of the Education Ministry, Shanil Hussein Uttar. It is the same agreement that was rejected by the union just last week, when the two sides met for their negotiations. The GTU president was absent at that meeting and had been pushing for an acceptance of the agreement, even as other union officials and teachers called for more discussions to take place. The signed agreement caters for a 10% salary increase for this year for the nation's teachers, along with an 8% increase next year and a 9% increase in 2026. It also caters for a number of non-salary allowances, scholarships, housing initiatives, a health care package, and other issues. While the GTU president has dodged media interviews, in a statement published on the union's Facebook page, it was noted that the GTU executives were instructed by the general counsel, by a majority vote, to accept the salary and non-salary package offered by the education ministry. The statement added that the benefits in the package aim to provide additional support for teachers, not only in their professional growth, but also in their personal and family lives. And to date, it appeared as though not all members of the negotiating team were aware of the signing of the agreement. General Secretary of the GTU, Coretta MacDonald, and at least two other members of the negotiating team walked out of the signing and complained that they were not made aware that there was a signing of an agreement to take place. The GTU General Secretary to the Union has been hijacked and teachers have found themselves facing trickery. And so there was this battling between the GTU uh, membership and a part of its leadership. Today we came to the meeting here at the Ministry of Education um, from hoping to continue from where we left off last week. Because you remember last week we said we are not accepting and there were several conditions in that proposal that were not yet confirmed on, that we had not yet fleshed out on. And having turned up here today to hear that we are signing on an agreement, uh, many of the officers, as a matter of fact, the, most of the negotiations committee pleaded with the president that we should ask for some time, look again at what we were doing before we signed on to an agreement. But it, in our opinion, the president came here to sign off on an agreement. Again, another trickery by the president of the Ghana Teachers Union to its entire membership. McDonald also said that with an agreement signed, it will now be up to the membership of the union to decide on the best way forward. The entire group did not come here expect, expecting to sign an agreement. Where does this leave the GTU? Well, that's what I'm saying. It, at this point, the GTU is here now um, where our members will have to decide what we do as from here on, whether that agreement will, will proceed, whether we will continue to have a, a whole GTU or we are going to have two GTUs, I'm not sure, but our membership will decide on that. The GTU General Secretary, who is also an opposition member of Parliament, also shot down claims that her position not to agree to the current agreement was rooted in her politics. Barrett Jack, you forgot that in 2016, when the coalition government uh, gave teachers, when we had an agreement there for 10%, he forgot how he was crazy about it. He forgot all the statements he issued to the, to the media then saying that the Granger government was um, uncaring and the Granger government could have done more for teachers. And eight years after we have this same Barajag News government now coming to give teachers 10%, eight years after, eight years ago, we were not exposed to all the, the finances that we're exposed to now. And so to say that this is political, 
I don't know if you can carry a political card to a supermarket. I don't know if you could carry a political card to the gas station. Meanwhile, GTU executive and Region 10 union rep Vanessa Kisun said she believes there should have been more discussions with teachers before the signing off on any agreement. She said she is disappointed in the actions of the GTU president. So we the teachers and the members of the Ghana Teachers Union will have to know where we take this matter from here. This is utter disrespect. In fact, when the general council met as the GS said, they met with the understanding that they were going to be updated on, you know, the discussions and what is happening with the negotiation. Teachers spent 75 days on strike action earlier this year, leading to court cases over their salaries and a brief return to work in the middle of the strike. However, once the negotiations got started, the teachers returned to work fully, telling the union that it should push for an increase of more than 30%. The government's initial offer was 6%, and that climbed to 9%, before eventually settling at 10%. Many teachers have taken to their social media pages to express dissatisfaction with the union and the agreement. More news coming up in just a moment. and ceilings. It's a lifetime of great memories and stories. Come talk to us and start your journey home today. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Are you ready to elevate your career with a world-class education from the comfort of your home? The University of Excellence Management and Business, UEMB, Guyana's premier accredited and recognized tertiary institution, invites you to join one or more of our comprehensive 145-degree programs. Registration is now open for our next intake on September 9 and every two months thereafter. Enroll now and secure a 50% scholarship. Choose from an ABA, BBA, MBA, MPM, EMBA, EMPM, and LLM degrees. Available in 14 specializations. Whether you hold an undergraduate degree, a diploma, or relevant professional qualifications, apply. We are an accredited degree-granting tertiary institution in Guyana. Our programs are also equivalent to a USA regional accredited degree. Submit your completed application form, proof of entrance qualification, and any form of ID. For more details, visit our administrative office in the Critchlow Labor College, Front Building, Wolford Avenue, or call 225-1395-225-1397-9, and 681-3434. Progressing to a degree is as easy as ABC with UEMB. Deal with the best and forget the rest. I can't wait until tomorrow. Yes! <laughs> I ain't start packing yet. Usually I pack a couple hours before and I go. Drive, 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 drive. I got my phone, I got my keys, my charger, my pa- <gasps> Procrastinating planning for the future? Well, that's never a good idea. Let Demerara Mutual and Demerara Fire and General help you get started with planning for your future today. I'm with Dem. Once you have registered for the virtual meeting, you would receive a registration email containing all the details you need to attend. You may need to check your junk or spam folder or your promotions tab in Gmail. Open the registration email and click on the blue button to join the meeting. In 
order to be correctly recognized during the meeting, enter your email address, then first and last name, then click Join Webinar. Do you have a business and want to reach more customers? Then sell on Fizarro.com. Sign up is easy and free. Take advantage of our site traffic, online payment processing, delivery service, and much more. Grow your business today. Fizarro, Guyana's premier e-commerce marketplace. Moments after the signing of an agreement between the Ghana Teachers Union and the government, President Irfan Ali went live on Facebook to announce that he was pleased with the agreement. In his video statement, the president said teachers should look at the entire package being offered to them and not just the salary increases. I'm therefore very pleased that the union, the president of the union and his team, the PS, CEO, and their team at the Ministry of Education were able to successfully conclude an agreement that would cover the years 2024, 2025, and 2026. My government remains strongly committed to our education sector revolution, modernization, and transformation. Under the agreement, teachers will get a 10% salary increase for this year, along with an 8% increase for next year and a 9% increase for 2026. The president said the increases must be examined in totality, explaining that the increases come with an adjustable clause, which says that if there is a higher increase announced for the public service, the teachers will get that higher increase also. In addition, holders of doctoral degrees will receive an additional $32,000 on their salaries, while holders of a master's degree will get an extra $22,000 on their salaries. These teachers will benefit from this allowance for the first time, for the first time in their life or in the teaching profession. Station allowance. The station allowance would see an increase of 108%, 108% in the station allowance. That is the highest station allowance increase. Headmasters for A category school will have an 11% increase in state allowance, uh, uh, station allowance, sorry. Headmasters in category B school, head teachers in category A school, will have an 11% increase in station allowance. Headmasters or head teachers in category B schools will have a 23% increase in station allowance. Head teachers in category C schools will have a 39% increase in station allowance. President Ali said the number of duty-free concessions given to teachers will also be increased. In this agreement, we have increased the number of concessions that will be granted by 50%, by 50%. In addition to the policy that all teachers who hold a substantive appointment as a senior master mistress or above within three years of retirement and have not received a previous duty-free concession are entitled to duty-free concession for one motor car up to 1500 cc. According to the president, his government remains committed to the overall development of teachers and their working environment. A mid-morning fire gutted a furniture manufacturing establishment this morning in the east coast of Marara village of Enterprise, leaving millions of dollars in losses and damages. The Ghana Fire Service was summoned to the scene of the blaze just after 10 o'clock this morning and immediately went into action. Workers of the furniture manufacturing business were busy trying to save as much as they could when the fire service arrived. But by that time, the fire, which was aided by mattresses and large pieces of sponge, quickly engulfed a big part of the wooden barn and scorched a nearby house. Two persons who lived next door recalled hearing persons shouting fire when smoke was seen billowing from the building. While they rushed into their homes to get some of their valuables, the fire raged on. You know, I just get away with my family to roll out my vehicle. 
Next to the walkers from this yard, come and shout me fire. By the time I park my vehicle, when I run, I go in the building, I try to move back and move, and that is it. I can't tell you nothing more, more than the fire start build up. The Ghana Fire Service was able to restrict the spread of the blaze. The fire service continues to encourage business owners especially and other citizens to install fire detection and extinguisher equipment on their premises. Exciting news! The capping stack has arrived in Guyana. In the unlikely event of an oil spill, this vital equipment is placed over a blown-out well to stop or redirect the flow of hydrocarbons, ensuring a rapid and effective response. With the capping stack now in hand, Ghana stands out as one of just two oil-producing nations in the region with such a crucial safety measure readily available. This marks another significant step towards ensuring that Ghana produces oil and gas safely and sustainably. Are you looking for the best high school education at affordable fees? Then register your child today at the VYC Academy. Now enrolling grades 7, 8, 9, and 10 students for the 2024-2025 academic year. VYC Academy. Achieving academic excellence. For more information, call us on 227-1013 or WhatsApp us at 649-1300. Region 4, the Guyana Public Service Cooperative Credit Union will be hosting its annual general meeting for the period 2021 to 2022 on Sunday, the 25th of August, 2024, for members of Region Number 4. The meeting will be convened at the Critchlow Labor College, Wolford Avenue, at 10 hours. Members are encouraged to, to pre register at bit.ly forward slash GPS CCU AGM 2024 for further instructions on how to take part in the meeting and to vote for a new committee of management. The meeting will take place both online and in person at various locations across the country. Full participation of members is encouraged. Let us move your credit union forward. The Guyana Public Service Cooperative Credit Union. People helping people. and ceilings. It's a lifetime of great memories and stories. Come talk to us and start your journey home today. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. Bust up! Bust the flavor, flavors! We're full of flavor, flavor, flavors! Bust the flavors! That my craver! We're full of flavors! Tell your neighbors about the bust the flavor, flavors! Grab a bust the flavor, flavor, flavors! Yeah! Thirst Buster! Grab a Buster! Bust the flavor, taste the savor! Bust the flavor, flavors. Bust the flavor, flavors. Vice President Barra Jack Dio on Tuesday defended his government's spending of money from the oil fund and told indigenous leaders that the hinterland communities are already benefiting from the oil money. Guyana has been earning hundreds of millions of dollars from the oil sector, which began production in 2019. In many communities, citizens complain that they are yet to see and feel the impact of that cash flow. With regards to the hinterland communities, Mr. Jack Dio told the National Tushaus Conference, which is currently on the way, that the development taking place in their communities is being funded by the oil money. Apart from the funds that you are receiving directly, the infrastructure in, this re in the regions that you live in are going to be transformed. Health infrastructure, education infrastructure, infrastructure, we're spending over $2 billion on water, road connectivity, and of course, ICT connectivity that would allow people to have greater access to scholarship programs. So if anything, the hinterland community is benefiting not just from beyond resources that we get from the oil sector, but so too is the rest of Guyana. So don't let anybody tell you 
that you the oil money you're not getting enough vice president jack do you also announced that indigenous communities will be receiving some 4.8 billion dollars this year from the sale of carbon credits to undertake several projects he said over the next 10 years some 15 percent or 112 million us dollars will be given to indigenous communities for various projects last year the government received 150 million us dollars from carbon credit sales and 22 million us dollars was dispersed to 242 amerindian villages this year the vice president said the country is set to receive just over 80 million us dollars from the carbon credit sales and while 2.7 billion was earmarked for amerindian villages a decision was taken to add an additional 2.1 billion Ghana dollars the president graciously agree to increase this so we reduce the government's amount that we are going to use for adaptation measures and a lot of them back into Amerindian communities too. The remaining 85% will be spent all across Ghana, including Amerindian communities, but we decided that 15% will go directly to the villages and the villages will decide how they spend the money. It was also noted that the same 242 villages will receive the monies this year, but an additional 100 million will be set aside for those communities that have now asked to be a part of the disbursements. Meanwhile, just like the president did, the vice president used part of his presentation to lash out at the Amerindian People's Association, which has been highlighting various issues in the indigenous communities. And so today, any, any Tusha who believes that this program is not serving their people and your community is free to opt out. We give you that chance to opt out because the APA doesn't want you to collect this money. They don't want you to get it. You're free and that's one thing I wanted to put to the Tusha here. They're, you're free not to take it. Where the money could easily go to the villages, reallocated to the villages that want it. Mr. Jack Deer has accused the organization of wanting to undermine development. Opposition Member of Parliament and leader of the Ghana Action Party, Vincent Henry, has complained that he was escorted by the police from the National Tushaus Conference Forum at the Arthur Chung Conference Center on Tuesday. Henry, who is an indigenous leader and sits on the Parliamentary Natural Resources Committee, said he was asked to leave the forum by a Ghana police force officer and was told that he was an imposter. He said he was informed that the forum was only for Tushaus. He said the presentation by the Minister of Natural Resources was stopped because of his presence and then the police escorted him out of the Arthur Chung Conference Center. But according to the Amerindian Act which guides the conference, the council cannot prohibit Amerindians from attending the meetings. During the opening of a Commonwealth Parliamentary Association seminar last year, it was Henry who slammed the government's handling of several issues related to the country's indigenous people. Henry's ouster from the conference center came on the heels of what appears to be a division among some two shows who are attending the meetings. While some have praised the government for its work in the indigenous communities, others have been outspoken about the many issues facing their communities. The opposition APNU AFC has lashed out at the government over the throwing out of the indigenous opposition MP from the meeting. Are you looking for the best high school education at affordable fees? Then register your child today at the VYC Academy. Now enrolling grades 7, 8, 9, and 10 students for the 2024-2025 academic year. VYC Academy, achieving academic excellence. For more information, call us on 227-1013 or WhatsApp us at 649-1300. Win one of 10 great prizes in the mobile dip and win promotion. Win a motorcycle, TVs, shopping sprees or free mobile lubricant. Just buy any mobile lubricant, collect your entry form, complete it and drop it into boxes provided at leading stores. Yes, buy any mobile lubricant and have a chance to win great prizes. Promotion ends October 2, 2024. Mobile lubricant, proven performance for your engine.
What was supposed to be a night of celebration turned into disaster after four friends who were all drunk left the bar in the city without a designated driver. Designate a driver. Don't drink and drive. Region 4, the Guyana Public Service Cooperative Credit Union will be hosting its annual general meeting for the period 2021 to 2022 on Sunday, the 25th of August, 2024, for members of Region Number 4. The meeting will be convened at the Critchlow Labor College, Wolford Avenue, at 10 hours. Members are encouraged to pre-register at bit.ly forward slash GPS CCU AGM 2024 for further instructions on how to take part in the meeting and to vote for a new committee of management. The meeting will take place both online and in person at various locations across the country. Full participation of members is encouraged. Let us move your credit union forward. The Guyana Public Service Cooperative Credit Union. People helping people. Guyana's economy is rapidly transforming, and we're all part of it. Guy Oil is at the forefront of this development by providing reliable and efficient energy and supporting community development from the very core. 100% of Guy Oil's profit goes back to building schools, roads, and other important infrastructure that connects our cities and towns, providing fuel to domestic, marine, industrial, and aerial transportation. Guy Oil has now repositioned itself as market leader in the petroleum industry, building a better future for all of us. Across the region tonight, Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brown has laid out his government's plan to tackle the recent surge in gun-related robberies and acts of violence plaguing Antigua and Barbuda. Speaking with a sense of urgency, Brown, in an address to the nation, declared that he can assure the citizens of Antigua and Barbuda of his government's unswerving commitment to take the fight to criminal elements and to defeat them. He emphasized that the safety and well-being of the people are the government's highest priorities. Addressing the concerns raised by the judiciary's sentencing practices, the Prime Minister urged for a realignment of the guidelines to reflect the gravity of gun crimes. And to enhance law enforcement capabilities, he said the government has announced several significant measures. Those measures include acquiring two additional vessels to improve maritime surveillance, installing 10 new surveillance zones, and acquiring more vehicles equipped with radios to facilitate rapid responses. Additionally, the Antigua and Barbuda government intends to hire 140 additional police officers and acquire more gun-sniffing dogs. The mysterious tanker that caused a major oil spill after capsizing off Trinidad and Tobago back in February has been successfully refloated, the government has announced. The operation was completed on Monday, and the vessel, known only as the Gulf Stream, will now be inspected by divers before being towed away, the energy ministry said. The ship was found with no crew on board after running aground and overturning off southwestern Tobago. No emergency calls were made and local authorities in Trinidad have been unable to find anyone responsible for the incident. Since then, some 50,000 barrels of oil have leaked, damaging the Caribbean island's pristine beaches and prompting the government to declare a national emergency. In a statement, the Energy Ministry said the Gulf Stream was now afloat in an overturned state, about 197 feet deep in the sea, secured and supported by tugs. A team of divers will assess the tanker and remove any hanging debris that could impact its towing to the capital of Port-au-Prince in Trinidad. 
And finally tonight, international news. A bus carrying Pakistani pilgrims overturned in Iran, killing at least 28 passengers, the Iranian state media reported earlier today. The crash happened last night in the central Iranian province of Ziaz and was due to a defective braking system, the Reuters news agency has reported. Another 23 passengers were injured, 14 of them critically. Pakistan's ambassador to Iran, Mohammed Mundasir, told the BBC. The pilgrims were traveling from the Syed province to Pakistan to Iraq's holy city of Karbala to commemorate one of the biggest events on the Shia calendar. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and encouraging you to have a safe and enjoyable night.